Welcome to part 21 of this video series. Today I'm going to be discussing keeping your small little word boat safe and secure. And a special thanks to those of you who have already subscribed to this channel. And again, thank you so much for supporting the creation of this video series. If you haven't done so already, then please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos in this series. This has to be one of the most important subjects that we have discussed on here. If you plan on being a liveaboard, then keeping your boat safe is extremely important. And I'm not just talking about from thieves, but also from fires, drifting, and well, not sinking. Unfortunately, this is a subject I was forced to learn about the hard way, not once, but twice. The first time was many years ago while I was in an anchorage. We're guessing they had figured out my schedule when I was going to be on board and when I wasn't going to be on board. They did it in broad daylight where anyone could see them. They stole my engine, which just had a padlock on it, a bunch of stuff from inside, including a half full porta potty. Ugh. <laughs> then, just this last fall, I got hit again at a different anchorage, and this time we figured it was probably teenagers. Yes, they stole stuff like a generator and anything else worth value, but they also completely vandalized the boat. They even attempted to sink it. Unfortunately, the boat was a complete write off. Anyways, whether you keep a boat in a marina, or in an anchor, or on a mooring ball, Disaster can always happen. So first thing I'm going to talk about preventing theft and vandalism. This is a really sad statement to say, but the truth is, most theft is from other boaters. Most boat thefts are crimes of convenience. Okay, for example, near where I live, there's a canal right downtown, and transient boats from all over the world come and tie up on the dock next to a popular path. The only security is a railing and some closed circuit cameras, which are well posted. For the most part, it's fine, but late at night after the bars close, things like coolers that are left in cockpits, etc. have a tendency to disappear. You know, people hoping to find some more booze after everything else is closed. Keeping your boat in a marina does offer the security of the presence of other boaters and staff walking around. Plus, a lot of them have cameras and gates. But this doesn't stop all thieves. Thieves sometimes belong to the same marina as you, or they use small boats and slip in at night. Being at a mooring ball or anchorage does offer the security of the fact that they need, to, they need to have a boat to come out to rob you, but there's lots of small boats out there. It can even be a cheap Walmart inflatable. Okay, so let's talk about ways to secure your boat. First, don't leave anything sitting out in easy view, so that anybody walking along can just reach in and grab it. These actually count for the bulk of boat thefts. Second, try to make your boat less desirable. Make sure your locks and security can easily be seen. If you have a security system, advertise it. Heck, it doesn't even hurt to advertise you have a security system if you don't. You want to make it look like robbing it will be really hard, so they don't want to try in the first place. And try to put anything of value completely out of sight. I have a friend who has a sailboat, and when he's not on board, he puts a steel diamond plate hatch replacement in. Not only does this make it actually really hard to break in, but it's a visual deterrent, so thieves don't try in the first place. Third, the number one big ticket item that you need to be secured is an outboard. This is especially true if you have a smaller outboard that can be easily carried away. Having it locked to your boat via cable will prevent the loss of it if it accidentally becomes loose and falls overboard, but it does very little to stop a thief with bolt cutters. What you need is a purpose-built outboard lock that makes it hard to use bolt cutters on it. Remember, cutting steel with a saw, either power or hand, makes noise, something most thieves try to avoid. Some security systems can give you peace of mind. There are lots of options out there from very expensive to very cheap, even some do-it-yourself options. I remember once I was at a marina and there was another boater there who was huge on people not touching his boat. So much so, I think if it was sinking, all the other boaters would just sit and watch it out of fear he would sue them for putting a fingerprint on it. Anyways, he had made this cheap tripwire alarm using a fishing line and a clothespin. In concept, it worked great. But one time when he was not on board, it went off. A false alarm. And since there was no way to turn it off, it just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. The battery must have lasted for a full day and a half. Many boaters complained to management, but even the management wouldn't go near it. A few days later, he and his boat were gone. The management had evicted him. Although, to be honest, I think it was kind of a last straw kind of a situation. 
Some of the more expensive systems are absolutely fantastic. They monitor absolutely everything on your boat, from the water in the bilge to the fluid levels in your tank. They can be hooked up to your fire alarms or carbon monoxide alarms. They can even have a GPS that shows exactly where your boat is, so you know where it is if it gets stolen or if it comes loose from its moorings. Or for that matter, they can be used as an anchor alarm if you drag anchor, either while you're on board or away. Now there's even some models now that have GSM technology that can transmit all this information to an app on your phone via a cell phone signal. These are great. You can see everything going on in your boat no matter where you are. Some now even have cameras so you can see inside your boat from wherever you are. Now, of course, there's a downside, and in this case, it's cost. First, the systems themselves are not cheap, and most require you to have a monthly subscription or for you to put in your own SIM card and have your own special data cell plan specifically for it. Now, I should mention there are cheaper models that can alert a keychain beeper from as far as three kilometers away. These don't give you all the information, but at least you know if your alarm is going off if you're just at the local store. As far as sensors go, the one to avoid is motion sensors. These are great in a house, but not on a boat. Some of the reasons are obvious. Boats move, the stuff inside the boats move. But what a lot of people don't realize is that most of these sensors are passive and not active. The difference is that passive detects motion based on perceived increase of radiation in its environment. <laughs> now that what that means is it can detect an increase in heat, like a hot sunbeam coming through a port and crossing inside the boat as the sun moves. Now there is a lot of other types of sensors out there that you can use, for example, contact sensors. These can be used on hatches and ports. Pressure sensors, which can be set up on your cockpit floor. Beam sensors, which send an infrared beam across the interior cockpit, and if, if anyone breaks the beam, the alarm will sound. One last thing about security alarms. If you have one that can't be controlled remotely, then make sure the siren has some form of timer on it so it doesn't just continue to ring and ring. Another idea, if you know another liveaboard at the marina that you absolutely, completely trust, Give him the alarm code so if there is a false alarm when you're not around, they can at least turn it off. Now there are other types of alarms you should have on board, even if it's not the law in your area. And that's things like smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. If you're using propane, then definitely a propane detector. Uh, bilge and high water alarms are also a great idea. So if your boat is taking on water, it will alert the people around to come and help or maybe even wake you up if you're sleeping on that sinking boat. Another type of security we should discuss is securing your boat or dinghy to a dock, etc. Yes, the obvious thinking here is you need to lock up your dinghy, but rarely do people lock up their boat. And to be honest, boat thefts, especially for liveaboards who sleep aboard their boat, are rare. But one time I was cruising through North Carolina on the intercoastal waterway. It was late at night and for some reason I couldn't sleep. I heard some teens quietly laughing and it got my curiosity up. When I looked out, they had untied a boat and because it was an ebb tide, the boat was heading out towards an inlet to the ocean. Not cool. Truthfully, I rarely lock my boat to the dock, unless I'm in a place where I'm worried that might be a real possibility. Having a lock on board that I can use for these situations makes me feel a lot more comfortable. What I personally use for locking either my boat and dinghy up is simple. It's a strong 25-foot aircraft cable with a foot of quarter-inch chain attached to the end. The reason I attach to the chain is many times you're trying to lock around something like a bollard where they can just loosen the cable and slip it up over the crossbar and off. With a chain, you can adjust the length by just using a padlock so they can't get it over. The last thing I want to discuss today is insurance. A lot of small liveaboards are trying to cut costs by not having insurance. This is a mistake. And as someone who has been vandalized and robbed, I can tell you how important getting insurance is when you're a liveaboard. Plus, a lot of marinas require proof that you're insured. This is your home. It's important to protect it. The other thing is, currents, winds, mechanical failures. There are a lot of things out there that can lead to you losing control of your craft and damaging not just your boat, but somebody else's. Even if your boat isn't worth that much, the other boat you hit could be worth millions, and that could be an extremely expensive repair. Make sure you at least get some form of insurance. Now, if I missed anything, or if you have any thoughts or ideas about this subject, or ideas for future subjects that I have not covered, 
please let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love hearing from you. And thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video series on living aboard a small boat. If you have, then please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Also, I included links to all my past videos in the description below.